Yo, my peoples, what's up? Jason here with the One Stop Co-op Shop and a five points preview. This one is the comic book bubble. The latest from Ape Games. Go ahead and check the show notes for the crowdfunding link. It is a commodities exchange stop manipulation game. But you're not trading wheat or cows or that kind of stuff. You're trading comic books. I will give you five points. Break this game down so that you can make an informed decision on whether this is the right project for you. First point I would like to discuss is the designer, Scott Alms. You may know him from Tiny Epic. He has contributed more than 10 games for that series. He's also done the Claim series, two-player trick-taking, stuff for Button Shy, Renegade Game Studios' solo gaming series. He's very prolific, and I feel at this point he's really honed his craft. If you want uh, someone who does a lot with a little... And in this environment where we're trying to save money on games and try to get the best bang for our buck, I don't think you could do better than a Scott Alms design. His games are not for everybody, but if they're in your wheelhouse, then I think that you're pretty sure to get a good value for your dollar. The second point of discussion is the game's theme. The comic book bubble refers to the period in the late 1980s and early 1990s where comic books were everywhere and collectors tried to identify which comics, which debuting characters or special editions would be worth the most amount of money and keeping them and collecting them for as long as they possibly could. So you don't really need to know the theme or be familiar with the motif to play this game. At the end of the day, it is a price manipulation game. Buy low, sell high. I'll go over that in the mechanisms in just a second. What I will say is that the theme, one, enables a lot of really cool cards with art on them. So you have this uh, really fun uh, kind of fake comics and evokes the time period uh, very, very well. And you have a giant deck of cards that just, I think they did a really good job uh, you know, evoking the time period with some of these uh, covers, graphic novels, all that kind of thing. A second thing is that if you play with someone like me who knows the time period, you'll hear all the stories about me having New Mutants 87, the debut of Cable, worth $150, but I had to sell it for about $20. <laughs> uh, or the death of Superman, where there was like a billion comics, and he ended up coming back a month later. Or Bob Harris, who... <laughs> if you don't know about Bob Harris, then Google it. All right, let's get to it. You've been waiting for it. Point number three is the core mechanism. Buy low, sell high. Every round, there are going to be a number of cards picked from this big old comic book card deck, and uh, players are going to draft them around one by one. So on an individual turn, you have to figure out what you want to do with this card. The main action is to buy, and you want to buy low. So I am looking at the outlay right here. Here are the prices of the different genre of comic books. I noticed that this adventure-looking genre, the red, is super low. Uh, says zero right here, but the minimum price is one. So I'm going to jump on that. Look at that. I just bought a Butcher Queen uh, number of five for one buck. Over the course of the game, I'm going to be able to manipulate this, or other players are going to manipulate this too. Maybe I can jack the price of that red one. I can uh, have this uh, rearrange so that... The red is at maximum value, so on the future turn, if I can last long enough, then I would get the $6, which is the top value in year one, per symbol. So I just turned $1 into 18 bucks. I am a genius. The other thing to note here is that during the game's rounds, which the game calls years, the upper bounds and lower bounds of what I can get for a comic will expand to create even more stakes when you are buying comics. So you can hold on and get a fat $12 per symbol if you're able to hold on that far. Or if you want to tank the value of another player, you can manipulate the market to get their, their comics down to minus two and minus five per symbol. Wow, this can get really hairy towards the end of the game all the market manipulation powers available via these multi-use cards. There are so many ways to uh, get yourself in a position where you can do that buy low, sell high thing, tank the value of, the, of your opponent's comics, all sorts of stuff. So one of the actions you can do uh, per term with your drafted card is buy, as I illustrated before. Another is speculate, which you would focus on these symbols. If I were to take my action and speculate, then I would raise the value of these particular genres uh, for future use. 
Uh, once everybody has done their speculated action, then you would adjust the price uh, up there. However, uh, to intercede and manipulate that even more, I could choose instead to use it, uh, use the card for their superpower ability, which is on the bottom. So let's say, let's reset that for a second, uh, that I think that my opponent is going to jack the price up of these symbols. I could play this power, which actually flips the position of these two uh, symbols right here. And so instead of raising the value, it would actually go down, which is pretty nasty indeed. So you very much have to read people, read the players, read what they're doing, see what of comics they have in their available buy slots, what they might uh, want to increase value, which comics they might want to sell in a particular turn, and react to all of that on your turn. So the last thing I'll talk about is player count. Uh, right now I've laid out a four player game, which I think is about the game sweet spot three or four. That gives you a decent amount of market manipulation. Things are a little bit chaotic, but you still feel like you have that control so that you can buy and sell things at a reasonable rate. Five, I did not play with five, but it might feel a little bit uh, chaotic out of your control, but your mileage may vary. We are the one-stop co-op shop, so we want to know about solo. Does this game have promise as a solo game? So I will be completely honest with you, loyal watcher. I have not played the solo mode. However, I do have hope, A, because it's Scott Alms. Scott Alms knows it's solo. And B, I think that there is enough in here in terms of replacing the active market manipulation with an optimization puzzle. Buying for as low as you can, dealing with whatever a bot or anything else throws at you and selling for as high as you can and reaching a high score and that being fun. So once again, I have not played the solo, I'm extrapolating off of my experiences, but I do think there's potential there for a decent one. Once again, that was the comic book bubble. Go ahead and check the show notes for that crowdfunding link. This is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop reminding you that we will see you at the next stop.